blessing to do it. Uh, turn with me for our call to worship this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you'll notice, if you're visiting with us, uh, each week in our order of service, we work through a book of the Bible. Uh, we have the Bible here as central in our worship as it should be. And so during the worship service, we'll have a call to worship. Uh, we'll have a call to repentance. Uh, this morning, we'll be taking the Lord's Supper together, being the first Sunday of the month. And then we'll have a call to worship the Lord through giving, the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And each of those calls will come from a book of the Bible. As we work from Genesis to Revelation, this week we find ourselves in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and beginning in verse 4. And we want to now orient our hearts and minds toward the worship of Almighty God. It's very, very important that we concern ourselves with worship that is in spirit and in truth and to make sure that our hearts are um, set right before we do that. We're entering into the very throne room of God, amen? Well, the word Deuteronomy, the title of the book, is from the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, and it's from a Greek word, deuteros, meaning second, and namos, meaning law. Literally, Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law or a repetition of the law. And in many ways, the book of Deuteronomy is a book of reminders. In the opening sections of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses reflects on the history, the theology of Israel. And if you can imagine, Moses has had nearly four decades now wandering around the wilderness of Sinai with the people of Israel and has witnessed the death of an entire generation of God's covenant people in the wilderness. And so he opens the book of Deuteronomy by reminding them. He reminds them of the tragic failure of the people at Kadesh Barnea when they refused, rejected, refused to trust the Lord and to enter the promised land. He reminds them of God's just judgment against their rebellion, against their unbelief. He reminds them of their sin and why they had wandered the wilderness all that time, why that first generation died. And then Moses reminds them of the law and the Lord's will concerning them. And he says in chapter 5, verse 29, foreshadowing the circumcised heart or the new birth, the regeneration that would mark all of God's people under the new covenant, God says, oh, that these people, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandments that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Well, in essence, Moses reminds the people that the immeasurable grace and mercy that has been shown to them through a covenant relationship of God, with God, the God of the universe, that that grace and that mercy should not be received in vain. It can't be received in vain. It can't be received casually or cavalierly or flippantly. The grace of God must be received or it must be embraced with unreserved love and unreserved devotion. That is what the God of the universe is calling them to in this relationship that he has with them. Deuteronomy chapter six then, beginning in verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. In other words, all the time. Amen? You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Notice first that the paragraph here, Deuteronomy chapter 6, is dominated by a series of commands. Verse 4, hear, O Israel. Verse 5, Love the Lord. Verse 6, these words shall be in your heart. Verse 7, teach these words. Verse 7, talk of these words. Verse 8, bind these words. Verse 9, write them. Right? In other words, don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. The book of Deuteronomy is a book of reminders. It's a book of remembrance. These words apply to us, don't they? They apply to us. All scripture is profitable and given to us for our instruction. Love and devotion and worship 
worship of the Lord who has delivered us out of the house of bondage to our sin. He hasn't taken us out of the fiery furnace in Egypt. He's done something far greater for us. He has taken us out of bondage to our sin. He has led us to freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That Lord, that deliverance who even now he cares for us as we walk through the wilderness of this world, as we sojourn as exiles and pilgrims here. The one who will now, even now, bring us into our inheritance to a land that he has promised us. That love and devotion and worship is predicated on hearing these words, keeping these words in our heart, teaching these words, preaching these words, talking of these words all the time, binding these words on our hearts, in our minds, writing these words, meditating on these words, worshiping God for these words, studying these words, memorizing these words, right? Love, in other words, isn't merely an emotion. Love is devotion. Love is devotion. And we are here this morning to devote ourselves afresh, as we do each week, when we come into the house of God to worship him. We take fresh oaths in his name, don't we? We covenant anew, afresh. We uh, come with gathered people of God to uh, sing praises to his name, to consider his word to us, to rejoice in him, to remember, to remember. We can walk through the, the tracks of this world during the week, can't we? Can't we? And uh, to our own shame, too often and too quickly forget. But this is a time of remembrance. This is a book of remembrance. And we're remembering the Lord our God. We must never forget all that he's done for us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we worship you and praise you and thank you for this glorious blessing of being called the children of God. Behold what manner of love you've shown us. And we come to you now, Lord, with love on our heart, on our hearts, with gratitude in our hearts. Uh, grateful to you, Lord, for the blessings of being called your children, the blessings of the new covenant, uh, the blessed salvation to which we've been delivered because of the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you. We long now, Lord, with renewed hearts, regenerated hearts, hearts worked upon by your spirit. We long now to worship you in a way that is pleasing to you to worship you now, Lord, in a way that is worthy of you. Be with us now, Lord. Attend your worship and be pleased, Lord, to visit us by your spirit that your worship might magnify your great name. Magnify our Lord Jesus Christ. All praise, honor, and glory to you. We pray these things in his name. Amen.